Welcome back to Healthbound Gaming. Today, we are going over Diablo 4, a review of the beta. My name is Neckridge. Hopefully, I'm your favorite bold gamer by now, and if I'm not, I hope I do become that relatively soon. Maybe by the end of this video, if you stick around, right? Okay, so, we're going to go over Diablo 4, we're going to talk about it, and we're going to give a uh, very detailed and honest review about the game. We have people out there that just, they're spewing almost blind hate for the game, and a lot of it's unjustified. Um, I have my problems with the game, I definitely have my concerns, but I like to be real. I like to be real and I like to say, you know, when people do a good thing, when they deliver a nice product, I'm honest about it. I don't just hate on on a, a game to drum up more views and like some people do, you know, like, like look at this person said, like, and people start talking about it, and it's, I, I'm not like that. I like to give honest feedback and do, give an honest review. There are some things I'm going to talk about that I don't agree with in the game, but let's get started. Let's go through this. First, I'm going to start with the gameplay. Gameplay of the game, it, it feels good for the most part. Gameplay obviously varies depending on um, class and such, right? Because gameplay kind of revolves around like clear speed, how fast you go through content, how fast you kill enemies. That's kind of gameplay as well. Um, kind of all lumps into uh, the controls and and how you how things feel to play and how fast you kill things. Like overall, it feels pretty good. It's it's not all balanced, which is going to be a topic we get into. But the kill speed feels feels good. It feels like it's it's where it should be for the most part for most classes. And I really do enjoy the combat. I enjoy that um, that section of gameplay, I'll call it. Because gameplay is kind of a very general term, and it includes stuff like like how you progress, right? Um, but speaking of just like controls and, and how you actually, uh, how it feels to play the game, it feels good. Now, one other thing. I'm a PC gamer, true and true, right? But... A lot of PC gamers, they have controllers because they play a game like like a Souls-like game, right? like an Elden Ring or a Dark Souls or something like that, right? They generally play better on a controller, generally. So people prefer the mouse and keyboard, and that's fine. I tried the controller for a little bit. I tried for literally maybe like 15 minutes. And you know what? It's not bad. And we can see why it's not bad. It's because like the game was almost designed with controls first, and then it kind of like poured it over to mouse and keyboard. And... That's the right way to do it, believe it or not. If you're if you're trying to, you know, have the largest audience, I get that. But I prefer if you do it PC and then you try to, you know, get consoles in there. But it's generally a little bit harder because now you have UIs that might not it might not work right for a control. It might be a little bit too um, too complex, too many too many different sections, too many different buttons that that a, a console controller would would be required to to press. But as you can see. If you like controllers, you like playing with the controllers, you can play with it. You definitely could. I think uh, some of the stuff's a little weird, like the leap slam. Like, it's a little strange, but you could certainly do it. So maybe I don't know. Maybe you're casting your uh, your computer over to your your TV, and you're kicking back on the couch, and you don't want a mouse and keyboard on top of you. You could play with a controller. You can play with a controller. Now I only play hardcore, so I don't know if I trust myself with a controller to keep my character alive. But you could definitely do it. You definitely could get good with it. And it, like on the fly, I just switched back to mouse and keyboard. You'll see it functions, right? You could real, real quick swap back and forth if you like. And then, of course, we have Steam Decks out now, right? We have Steam Decks. People, that is a controller, essentially. It's a computer with a controller built into the, the interface of the thing, right? How it's built. It's, it's a controller. So if you can play a game with a controller, you can play it with your Steam Deck. So that's, that's cool. So, enough about gameplay. We're going to get in, into, uh,. What are we going to? Let's go to interface. Interface, a little bit weird. A little bit strange. Um, you know what? Let's talk about down here, the HUD, a little bit. Down here, we have six abilities we can have, and that's that's like a gameplay um, decision, right? How many abilities you can have equipped. And they do a relatively good job of, you know, just listing them out, just like, like a typical MMO would do, right? On an action bar. However... What they don't give you is the ability to customize your UI, not not the scale and not anything beyond this. Now it's in the left corner. It's really truly missing a lot of customization options that I I immediately started looking for. I was like, I don't really like the uh, the scale of it. It might be a little bit too small if you're playing on 4K, you know. And and one of the biggest issues is why can't I show my text of my life? 
I want to see that number, right? I want to see that number listed here. It can either be right above or it could be on the globe. I don't care, but I want to see that number without having to scroll over. That's important to me. I like to see that. Uh, more information, the better. But the UI itself is a little bit lacking. The mini map can't be, you can't shrink it, can't change the opacity. It's missing a lot of features, and I'm hoping that is beta only. And this is a beta review, so it's the game as it is right now is what we're reviewing. So I'm hoping that we see a lot more customization. I should be able to drag some elements around, maybe break up the action bar, move the health globe to the left and keep the action bar centered if I want to do that. Move the experience bar down to the bottom. Remove the numbers down here. I don't need to see those. We're going to remove the numbers, maybe move the bar down a little bit more. I would like customization. I want to see that. Separate debuffs and buffs like here because they appear like around the same area. I want to move stuff. That's important. We need customization. And this is exactly why MMOs end up with a lot of add-ons and stuff because the game itself doesn't doesn't support it. That's not a supported feature. So we need, we need mods and stuff. We need add-ons to, to be able to do that. This game will never support add-ons and mods, and that's, that's okay. But if you're not going to support it, we need the options. We need those options. So that is definitely a, a big miss. And again, hopefully it's just the beta. Um, graphically, game looks phenomenal. And I'm going to kind of bundle graphics and performance together a little bit in this, in this topic. It looks great. I think the lighting looks fantastic. And obviously this is a dark area. Um, so lighting kind of really shines, you know. Um, and when you're when you're in a bright area, you know, the greens look better. The foliage looks good. And they did a really good job of, of providing a lot of different, um, different areas, different environments. And they picked a good area for the beta. Like the beginning of the game kind of has, has a frozen area, has a forest type of area. They they really mix it up well. So you can really see a lot of the different um, environments the game has to offer. Um, you know, as we, if we choose to zoom in, the game just looks fantastic. It looks so good. I, I think they did an excellent job on this. It's hard to get graphics better than, than what we see here in an ARPG, at least right now. Um, in modern day 2023, right? That's, where, that's the year we're in. It's This is pretty... Pretty top notch. That's the shadows look great as this uh, this kind of sways a little bit. Water looks good, so I like it. And performance wise, I have run a big guild. You're welcome to join it if you want. We run a big MMO guild. We're really competitive in our MMOs we play, and we're playing Diablo 4 kind of as a as a filler. So we'll probably jump back to Diablo 4 every every season or so. But anyway, the reason I'm bringing that up is because we have people in the guild that are using like 10 series cards, 980s and stuff, and they're they're killing it they're playing the game they're they're running along with us they they play just fine they don't have any performance issues so blizzard really did a good job when it when it comes to performance and optimization they did an excellent job with it and i love seeing that because like i mentioned before like a steam deck or if you're playing something that might not be have the best performance that's not insulting the steam deck steam deck is actually quite powerful for a handheld system if you're playing something that doesn't have the best performance in the world the game runs well. It can it handles it. You know, it does does an excellent job. And I'm actually pleasantly surprised because of how how graphically intense the game truly is. It actually is. And I know it's isometric, so it's hard to really see it and appreciate the graphics. But it's there. It's there. It's it. The graphics are definitely uh, pretty high end. You can tell it. You know, you look at the furs and such. You can see um in your furs the uh, you know. I don't know what else to call it. Furs, like the, the, the textures of the of the furs and hairs and stuff. It just looks great. Looks really, really good. And I have nothing else more to say about that, about the graphics or the uh, performance. You do a good job. Server performance is a different different story right now with the, with the beta. This is the beta. Server performance issues. We're going to have that problem. And sometimes you, you'll notice a lot of issues as you transition out of a zone or into another zone. You'll you'll see some, like, clipping, some loading, or maybe even a disconnect. Um, early days in the open beta, it was it was horrible. The first Friday and Saturday, uh, mostly Friday. It was just, it was horrible. But hopefully they get their server things down pat for the full release. We'll see. Now, I'm going to start getting into some, um, some uh, topics I don't necessarily have the greatest opinion about um we're gonna go into clans clans like i said i have a guild i have a I, I, we play together we we like playing games together i have some guildies online right now why is there a clan system in the game there should be there definitely should be but if you put it in the game support it put in features that make sense that make you feel like an actual guild like, like an actual clan there's almost Nothing worthwhile about a clan. You can get a little heraldry thing that appears 
essentially only here when you're looking at the clan. You go to Manage Clan, you can put your description, message of the day, clan information, all that that stuff that doesn't really matter. I'm looking for more gameplay features. So there's no clan leveling. There's supposed to be a clan stash, but that that's minor when you can just you can trade it to a clan member and say, hey, I got this for you, buddy. Here you go. You don't really need a clan stash. It's a nice feature. I prefer having it. But it's so minor that that alone doesn't justify the, the existence of clans. Where's the clan leveling? I'd love to have a level, uh, you know, you get some bonuses maybe for leveling a clan. Um, something that we know it's open world, right? As we explore open world, we see other players, which is, it's okay. It's, it's an alright um, design. But why is it not preferencing clan members? And there should be like a like an option there that if you want to preference the best server, fine. But if you want to like play together with clan members, like if you're all located somewhat near the same area, why can't you prioritize that? That when you roam around an area, or when you first log in, maybe I have Psy and True and White Blazer. They're playing together on a on a, on a layer. When I log in, it should prioritize that layer. It should put me on there. It should try to put me on there unless it's, like, jam-packed. Then I understand, like, okay, let's move this player to somewhere else. But there should be a system that tries to do that so you see your clan members out in the world. In addition to that, why are there clans in a four-player game when there's world bosses that support more players and we can't get multiple groups of clan members together? We managed to do that one time. We played with the system a little bit, trying to get to a world boss together on the same layer. By the way, there's a video of that fight Ashava uploaded to this channel. Highly recommend checking that out. We managed to get two groups of us together, so we had eight, right? We had two groups of four. But there's a clan system and that's it's in place and world bosses that su support more players, yet we can't merge groups together and bring a larger group together. Not even like... I'm not even asking, like, form a raid, and now you have 8 players or 12 players in a raid. That's not even what I'm asking. I'm saying, can't we get our groups prioritized to be on the same layer together, so when we go to a world boss, we, we're together. We could fight a world boss together as a clan. That means we have no random players, we're working together as a clan. I think a lot of people prefer that. And if you have a clan system, why aren't there features to support clan play? Support more of a reason for a clan to exist beyond a, there's a stash there, bro. It's, it's essentially a chat room. That's it. It's essentially an additional chat tab that you have waiting for you. That's it. And you chat, you see the, uh, the little challenges that, that guild clan members complete, and that's that just seems like a big miss. A big miss for Blizzard. And this is the type of game that has a lot of different um, alleyways of progression, a lot of ways to progress your character. I don't see why like a clan leveling system wouldn't exist. You get 2% more gold. You get 2% more experience. You know, little things, little bonuses you get as you level the clan. And then maybe you unlock clan-specific cosmetics. Now you get, like, a tabard or, or a maybe not a tabard. That was a little weird in the Diablo environment, but, like, a cloak or something with the back with uh, with a clan emblem on it. Needs a little bit more love, Blizzard, that clan system. Um, getting to the most damning topic, balance. Class balance we're going to be talking about here. I have this video loaded up that I did. Um, I have a video of all of the class's abilities in Diablo 4 beta. One of them I'm going to talk about is the Flame Shield. As I said, I only play hardcore. It's the only way I play the game. So staying alive is very important, right? Some of the classes are so unbalanced, both in the I'm overpowered as hell. I'm looking at you, Necro and Sorcerer, and I'm very, very weak. That's kind of like your Barbarian, eh. And Druid, who is definitely the weakest. The Rogue is the only one that feels like right. You know, it feels like that's that's a good point where every class you try to like bring some classes, you know, nerf two classes, buff two classes, bring them all together and, and meet at the Rogue. That kind of seems where we should meet. And the balance is all over the place right now in the game. Um, there's a lot of weak people that feel weak, a lot of people that feel overpowered, and a lot of broken builds where like you, you're essentially immortal. Flame Shield, this ability here is so ridiculous because the sorcerer gets something called an enchantment. And you'll see that on the screen there. It says at the bottom, enchantment effect. Flame shield automatically activates when you take fatal damage. It can only happen once every 120 seconds. You can be immune to damage. So when this pops, when you use it, or if it automatically procs from enchantment, you are immune to damage for about like like five uh, for about three seconds when you use it. It does burning damage around you, and one of the modifiers heals you for 50% of your missing health. 
and there's a 20% movement speed buff. Here's the crazy part. Want to hear me out here? Don't You might think, oh, I'm blowing it out of proportion. Okay. I'm making a big fuss out of nothing. This activates on its own. Instead of dying, it activates on its own. There's no skill for it. There's no timing it. Nothing. And it instantly heals you and makes you immortal for three seconds or so, depending on how many points you put into it. It starts off with two seconds, but it goes off to like 2.8, and then you can get more to it based off the gear you have equipped, right? You might have plus one to flame shield, plus two to flame shield. It'll increase it even more. Not only does that automatically proc and save your hardcore character's life, potentially saving you literally hundreds and hundreds of hours on your character, it is a separate cooldown from using it yourself. So it's a 20 second cooldown about, you can have cooldown reduction and such. You can use it to save your own life, be like, oh, okay, I didn't take damage there. Then you, maybe you take damage like five seconds later and it kills you. Well, that enchantment's gonna pop and save your life. That enchantment's gonna go on a two minute cooldown, even though Flame Shield's on, it's on cooldown right now because you used it. It'll still activate. So you have any more immunity to use, you have the enchantment that'll save your life, and then by the time you need it again, that's back up to use the immunity again. And what a lot of players are doing is, if that ever pops, that flame shield ever pops, they go back to town and sit there for two minutes and wait for it to come back. They are essentially immortal, like never you lose their hardcore character, essentially. You still can, you know, that could pop, you're still fighting the boss fight, and then he kills you again. It is so broken in a hardcore environment, it, it's almost like hardcore doesn't exist for sorcerers. You should be taking that as a hardcore sorcerer. It is the only option. And it's so ridiculous to see that in the game for a class where they're also range. They have some of the highest survivability to begin with, not only because of flameship, but they have this frost barrier, this ice barrier thing, which you see at the bottom right there a little bit. They could take that and the flame shield. They could teleport away from enemies. They're never in melee. The amount of survivability this class has is just, it's ludicrous. It's its absolutely insane. It's so broken, I cannot fathom how a developer thought this was okay to put in. And there's more than just that. There's more than just this person's overpowered. The druid, his ultimates, the ultimate abilities he has, he has are weaker than, than almost every class's basic skills. Not, not like the basic skill, the first skills you get, but like the normal skills that have a short cooldown. Like, the Barbarian's upheaval it has no cooldown, and it just uses fury, and it throws, like, you know, I used it at the beginning of the video, where it'll rip the ground, and, like, a, a line of rocks will go out. That's stronger than every of the, every ultimate that the Druid has, maybe except for one, which is kind of like a very defensive one, and very high damage ultimate. It's, it just makes absolutely no sense from a balance standpoint why that is in the game. Why these things are so utterly unbalanced, and you know what? It scares me a little bit. Because a little backstory, I think I mentioned my, my time in Diablo 3. Maybe not. Um, I'm a huge Diablo 2 fan. Grew up with Diablo 2. Loved it. Diablo 3, I played for one week. One week. And that was one week straight. No sleep for seven days. That's true. Um, I have people that can vouch for me for that. Um, Harley in my guild, you'll probably see her around in some videos. She was there with me. We stayed up for seven days straight. On the seventh day, I went, this game sucks. And I uninstalled it. And I never went back to Diablo 3. There was a massive balance issue at the launch that was obviously changed. It's been a lot of times since Diablo 3 has been out. But the balance was so absurdly bad. Or, his name is Rod Ferguson. He made a comment and said... His exact words, I don't want to misquote him here, is... There was a lot of balance there, but the trick around balance is that it's a balance over time, not a balance of the moment. Not all classes at level 5 should have the same power. I agree. I agree. Um... I, I like that he said that, but one of the things that kind of scared me a little bit was when he mentioned that, there's more, more to this conversation, but he mentioned that like not all classes should feel, feel balanced. I highly disagree with that statement. Your goal should be perfect balance, 100% perfection. Will you ever get that? No, you never. You will never get perfectly balanced in anything, anything in life, unfortunately. And definitely not in games. You won't get perfectly balanced um, gameplay. And that's okay, but you should shoot for that. You should design with that in mind. Because if you do, you know, you shoot for the stars, you miss, you at least you die in space, right? I think that's how the saying goes. And at least you're closer to a, a more enjoyable game for everyone, right? Everyone that's playing a class... It always sucks when, like, I'm a melee dude. I'm a frontline, beefy boy. I'm always a tank in MMOs. 
It sucks when the class that speaks to you and calls to you is the weakest. That sucks. It's not the situation in, in Diablo 4, but I'm just saying it sucks when it is, right? I'm sure everyone out there has felt that way when you play the game. You're like, it sucks. It doesn't feel good. Um, I hate that. I hate that. And I really hope uh, Blizzard focuses on balance, but Diablo 4 was, was I'm sorry, Diablo 3's end game balance was awful at the beginning. And I'm scared that that's the uh, the same situation we're going to be getting into in, in, with this. So that is my biggest concern with the game right now, is that balance could lead us to, to ruin. It could destroy this game for us. Um, crafting system. Crafting system, I'm going to move on over to that. Um, also, the Necromancer is also extremely overpowered, by the way. They're, they're essentially immortal with a certain build. Okay, moving on. Uh, I wanted to touch on that, too. So, balance is all over the place, I promise you that. The crafting system, it's kind of cool. It's it's. I don't dislike it. I think it's pretty nice. You can grab items, and you, you really like this item, you can upgrade it. You can spend gold and materials, you can upgrade them. So, it gives it gives something to farm, right? We have gold sinks, so we, we'll have a reason to farm gold. Gold is very important in the game. There's also materials in the game that you can go out there and farm. You know, killing enemies, getting skins, monster parts. Uh, you could pick up ore, pick up herbs, and create uh, consumables, elixirs to buff you. It's it's a nice additional way to progress your character. More than just leveling, right? Gear is very important in, in Diablo. In ARPGs, gear, gear is king. We need that. And we need ways to, to make it better and, and adjust it, modify it. So there are crafting systems, um, just like Diablo 2 and maybe even Diablo 3. I, I don't know. It's been a long time. We have gems, right? We have gem systems. We have sockets. And we can add gems to our gear. We can upgrade gems like this. You can see, okay, chipped emerald. It also costs gold. I'm going to choose uh, three crude um, emeralds and make a chipped emerald. Bam. So I just made one. Now I can I can put them in my, my inventory. It's also a nice touch that you can craft from the stash. Love that. So I think the crafting system is pretty good. However, there is a part of the crafting system I'm like, mm, I don't know, a little weird. You can take, and I know much, most people probably like this system, but gameplay-wise, it gets a little, almost a little annoying. How you constantly try to farm legendaries in order to break them and put them onto another item. And what I mean by that, there's, there's these aspects. At the very bottom, you see what it says, damaging elite enemy grants you a barrier absorbing 449 damage for 10 seconds. That's great, right? Cool. That's a great thing to have. Helps you stay alive. You could put the legendary item in here, break it down, and get yourself that aspect and put it on another item. That's pretty cool, right? I think it's a pretty cool system. However, what it boils down to is just almost spamming the same content trying to get the legendaries to break down to put on yellows. That's almost what it ends up being, and I'm worried that the end game will be you get yellows and every legendary you get, you break down, so your legendary becomes an aspect. It just becomes an aspect. It becomes something in your inventory that you just you hold on to for when you get a nice yellow and put that on. And it's one, and I know this is just like color, one of the nice things about it is once you upgrade a yellow, it becomes a legendary. But the legendaries have four stats on them innately. You'll see the vulnerable, strength, and crit damage. But if you get a legendary, it has four stats. There's some rumors that yellow items in higher difficulties can go up to like six or seven stats on them. That makes yellows the best items to get, to get again. That That's how Diablo 3 was at launch, and it just doesn't make any sense to me. Now you, you're turning a yellow into a legendary that's better than an innate legendary to find. So the, the RNG of finding a, a nice legendary drops not really a thing anymore. It's I only the only thing I care about my legendaries for is is the aspect. I just immediately break them down and just hold on to them. It just it kind of makes it a little bit weird. But it's not game breaking in any sense of the way. I think it's just a it's a different system and people start dungeon spamming because of that. And that's I'll talk about dungeon spamming a little bit. Right now in the beta, and I hope it changes, you can reset dungeons infinitely. So you find a nice dungeon to run. I know uh, my guild member was telling me which one. Was it this one here? Dead Man's Dredge? Spam running Dead Man's Dredge. He loves doing it. That's all he does. Clears it. Ports out with the teleport. He can teleport out. Just hit leave dungeon. Reset. Go back in. And that's all you do. What happened to the open world of this game? Like, you... you Blizzard put in some time into the open world, players roaming around, it feels a little bit alive, there's events out there and stuff, but people are going to find it, you know, in the beta, your time is better spent spamming dungeons and just resetting them infinitely, and you'll get the most bang for your buck. 
you'll get more out of that dungeon than roam in the open world and that's a shame um i think that's that sucks and that's part of that is the legendary system because people are just after those aspects to break down over and over rather than grab grab the currency the old balls and stuff and, and go after currency that allow you to gamble it's another form of progression which is it's nice to have multiple forms of progressions but i think it's it's kind of strange that you can do the best thing which is the dungeon that takes you out of the world and into your own dungeon you can do that as much as you want. No limit. You could reset it constantly. Even while I ended up putting in a uh, timeout for that. Um, that's probably because of bots. But, you know, that, regardless, I just... I don't see myself spamming dungeons 24-7. It's just not... It's not the most fun, right? Especially in a big open world. Like, this world's going to be enormous. I don't want to find the best dungeon in the world over here and just stay in this dungeon forever. You know, I don't, I don't want to do that. That's not cool. Um, world bosses. We're going to get to the last thing, which is going to be our world bosses, and then we'll uh, we'll do a little bit of a overall feeling about the game. World bosses. I have a video here. Um, a Shava world boss out in the game. It's uh, it's pretty cool. Pretty cool world boss. I love it. As a, as a big WoW gamer, as a big... Well, I used to play WoW. As a big MMO player, this world boss feels awesome awesome i cannot wait to see what other world bosses there are there's mechanics to dodge there's there's abilities you have to worry about and during this video i was calling out attacks that the boss was doing as like a raid leader would do right back in mmos you're calling out hey watch out for this uh this poison attack watch out for the these, these slash you know dodge this dodge that you let people know what's coming and what you can't see is at the top right i have people playing ranged in the guild and this is the video where we managed to somehow get two guild groups together we had eight players together on this boss and we have the rest of our guild out there they can't see the boss too well and i'm calling out these slashes here these are the range slashes that really mess up the range players it'll kill them we've lost players to it players lost their hardcore hardcore characters to it but there's really cool mechanics like that that you really have to watch out for or you lose your character or you die right and i just really really like what they did with these world bosses they make it feel like a more intense Tense battle, then then you're you just clear screens, run through super fast like a Path of Exile. You run your maps and you, you have a look at a, an end game Path of Exile build. You just see someone speeding through Mach 10 speed through the through the maps and just just blowing everything up with with whatever they're doing. That was a bug. <laughs> um, whatever they're doing, just whatever ability they're using, just just absolutely decimating Essence Trade and Contagion or something like that. Right? That was one. Just, just decimating the map and, and running out a million miles an hour. It, like, this is a nice change of pace from that. And it's more meaningful. It's more meaningful combat. And it feels great when you get the boss down. It feels like you actually accomplished something. And your life is not meaningless anymore. It's very important to have that in games. So it's, um, it's really cool to, to, to be able to get two clan groups together. And I'm hoping that it becomes an uh, intended system where you can do that. You can intentionally get all the, the, the clan members together and go fight the bosses together rather than having random players. It's cool to have random players. That's fine. But you should never stop players from playing together as a clan when there is a feature in the game that supports a larger amount of players. It's already there. I'm not asking for groups larger than four players. You already have the feature in the game that supports a larger amount of players. Stop blocking players off from guild members because this is so cool. This is a very awesome feature. I love the world bosses. Now, hopefully they're a little bit more rewarding to kill because it was a little bit, a little bit of a letdown with the rewards we got from them. But awesome, awesome stuff, fun stuff. Really like the, uh, really like the uh, world boss system. Bring more of them and make them spawn more often. They're fun. Um, all right, recap, guys. Okay, not a recap. Um, summary of how I feel about the game. Overall, Diablo 4 is an excellent game. It is in such a good state compared to what Diablo 3 was that I'm excited for it. The beta is ending now, and a lot of people in the guild are like, well, now what the hell do I do for two months before it releases? And that is a good feeling to have. When you really want to play more, you're like, well, damn it. You know, I want to get back in this game. It's it's a good good feeling. It's got its problems, and it could end up being awful. I could hate it a week in when we get to the end game and you, the, the balance is just not there. It's just one, one you have the sorcerers being completely immortal. Um, it's running into the Diablo 2 issue where the sorceress is just ridiculous to teleport. Everyone picks sorceress to start a, to start a new ladder, right? And I'm worried that that is exactly what we're going to see again with this game. I'm really hoping Blizzard play, pays very close attention to 
balance. I think it's the most important thing in a game like this. In MMOs and in, and in ARPGs like this that have a pseudo MMO system going on. It's not an MMO. Stop saying it's an MMO. It's not an MMO. But when you have something like this in place, it's just it's like insulting to everyone that's not playing the stronger classes. It, it really is. It's like they don't they don't care enough to even test their game and i'm telling you right now you guys might be rolling your eyes saying oh it's not that unbalanced no it, it is it's bad and i'm going to show you something real quick uh this video is uh, uploaded on the channel by now probably it should be um i went over every skill like i said that every class has this is the druid the druid i went over the the ultimate abilities and it's they're so pathetic that i i cannot fathom that blizzard even casted it once did any of the devs cast the ultimate one time did did you i honestly have that question because it is so pathetic that it, it can't be so this is the some of the weakest enemies in the game ghouls and i'm using the ultimate which is supposed to be it's a 70 second 70 second cooldown Se sorry 77 second cooldown what's supposed to be one of the strongest abilities in the game these lightning bolts and it kills, I believe, zero ghouls. Zero. It is so pathetic that I... And that's a normal ability. So, I'm going to show you that one more time if you don't want to watch the whole Druid ability video. I'm going to use the ultimate. And it, it hits. It hits some of them. You see it hits them. I, okay, I actually think it took out one ghoul. I think it took out one of them there. But it does so little damage how does that justify a 77 second cooldown when i then use a normal ability that has no cooldown and one shot them all what the hell happened you're scaring me you're actually scaring me for the for the end game but this is supposed to be a review of the beta and overall i think the game is fun it's very fun and isn't that the most important thing right when we play these games we play them for fun it is a fun game it is enjoyable i just hope we don't hit the brick wall at the end that is the uh, the lack of balance that we see in a lot of these games and in your previous games, Blizzard. Do the right thing. Pay attention to balance. I am looking forward to seeing the end game of the, of, of Diablo 4. Um, one last thing I wanted to comment on. I didn't really want to talk about it because it was supposed to be uh, beta only. But the scaling out in the open world. I talked about it in another video about when I went over all the features. The, the world like scales with you. It scales up to your level, right? The cool thing is you could play with players that are like level one if I'm level 25, which is the max in beta. We could play together. That's that's excellent. That's one of the best designs I've ever seen. Because when I first heard about it, I was like, that sucks. That sounds like crap. I don't feel like I'm getting stronger and the world constantly scales with me. In reality, when I played the game, I was wrong. I'll be the first to admit I was, I was absolutely wrong. The scaling was one of the best things I've ever seen. The reason for that is... I've played Diablo 2 where you lose a hardcore character in, in Act 3 and one of your friends loses his hardcore character, you have to go back and start a new character to play with him. You, you go back with a new character, you make new characters together as level 1 and you try to get back to Act 3. And then when you get back to Act 3, you swap back to your original characters and he stays on that new one because he lost his original, right? So you play together. That's not a thing anymore. I could take my main to help a level 1. They don't take any hit to experience. They can still keep playing with us. It's incredible. On paper, it sounded like crap, but in reality, it works so well. I'm, I'm ashamed that I originally had a problem with it. It is, it's good. It's good. It actually really works. And one of the reasons why I'm bringing this up and I'm looking at this statue here is, this is world tiers. World tiers. You eventually unlock higher world tiers. Eventually, when we all hit max level, when we get up there, the world's done scaling. It's done scaling. But you then have Nightmare Dungeons, and they have tiers, and those, those scale up tiers, that how the difficulty of these dungeons, how hard they're going to get. So you can essentially choose when you want the game to get harder. So as your level, yes, the world's going to scale with you. You might not feel like you're getting too much stronger, but you do. You do get stronger. It feels, it feels uh, pretty good. But that scaling will stop at some point. You're going to be okay. It will stop. If you hate it, you'll hit max level, the scaling will stop, and then it's just hitting the harder content, and you choosing when you're comfortable taking on the next tier, right? The next the next world tier, the next tier in the Nightmare Dungeons. That's a thing as well. I'll go over there and, and show you that as well. 
you get to choose when you're ready to do that. So that's the end of the scaling. So the end game's not going to really have the scaling. But while you're leveling, it's got the scaling in there. And it's just, it's great because not only can you go anywhere you want in the world, you don't have to go to a specific zone. This is level 20 to 25, and this is 30 to 35, so you've got to transition from here to here. You don't have to do that. You can come check this area out. You you know, it's, they do have levels. They do have levels, don't get me wrong. Like, this is level 36. This one's 25 plus, but that will scale. Like, if you enjoy this area, you can come here and stay here for a while. You know, it will scale. It will scale with you. But this level 36 at the top there, if I go there, they're going to be level 36 right now, and they will wreck me. So I don't want to do that. I would go to a place that's going to... And I can stay here until I'm 50, and then I can go there. But this level 36 zone will then be level 50 as well. But it works so well. It might sound bad, but it works so well in reality, and, and I love it. Um, one last thing I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to forget. Before I forget, I'm going to show you the world tiers. You make these nightmare sigils, you turn a dungeon into a nightmare dungeon, and you can choose when you're ready to take on the harder tier. Cool. And then, the last and certainly not least, I'm glad I didn't forget to do this, the skills. The character progression, the skills. <sighs> How often do I have to say I, I'm big on, on MMOs? When you play MMOs, you're used to a lot of different progression, a lot of different options and customization that makes you, your warrior, your warrior is different than my warrior. We went different paths. Yeah, you'll be different from another Barbarian. A Barbarian is different from this other Barbarian, sure. But if you use the same abilities, if someone says, I'm going to take Frenzy and I'm going to take Upheaval, they're almost the same. Maybe they have a different ultimate, but for the most part, they look exactly the same, not visually, but the way their, their gameplay is. Because there's almost always a right choice. Almost always like the right, the correct choice, I'll call it. The correct choice to take. I'm not talking right and left, I'm talking correct. So that's why I want to change my terminology there. For instance, Frenzy here. You gain 8% damage reduction for each stack of Frenzy. That's 24% because it stacks three times. If you're playing hardcore, you take the damn damage reduction. There's no option to take the attack speed. You don't do it. I'm sure people are doing it and like, oh, you're crazy. I take attack speed. You live life on the edge, right? Sure. I don't want to lose 100 plus hours of work. I would like the damage reduction. I want to stay alive. I don't want to lose my hardcore character. That's what I'm talking about. It's almost always like a correct answer. Same thing with Flay. You're, you're going to bleed build. This has damage reduction and thorns built into it. Like, there's almost a correct answer all the time. You don't take the, the increased bleeding damage. And that's not enough. There's... Strangely enough, you get one choice you have to take. So everybody takes this one. So you level, you get your ability, you get your upheaval. Then you level again, you get the modifier for it. You level again, you choose which path. And then everyone's almost always going to take the same one. That's kind of boring. That's very little customization there. Not a fan of that. And then some might, some people might be saying, well, what about the legendaries? They modify your, your abilities. Whirlwind's critical strike chan chance is increased by 8%. Well, the problem there is you generally just take every single legendary that impacts your main ability. If Whirlwind's your main ability, you grab all the Whirlwind legendaries. Just take them all. Because there's not going to be one for every slot. You're going to have like five whirlwinds, five whirlwind legendaries, if even. There's one that pulls them in. Uh, one with crit strike. Uh, there's another one here. Um, where'd it go? Whirlwind there has a chance to summon an ancient that also whirlwinds. There's not that many of them. So you'll take all of them, and then you'll take a few extra. So that's not customization. That's not going to make me different from you. We're both whirlwind barbs. We're both going to have the whirlwind legendaries. We're just going to run with them, right? That makes us the same. Is the very little customization in the game. And one of my questions here is, why is this even here? You have to take it. Everyone's going to take it. This one here. So what if that was a third option? It would make us all a little bit weaker because we can't take both. But what if it was? And then maybe at the end of the game, you get to like specialize in Frenzy. I want to specialize in Frenzy, so I get to take a second one for it. Or... I specialize in Frenzy, and a ring pops around it, or like like more paths grow out, and it's like, okay, bro, there's more Frenzy stuff for you. You want to you be a Frenzy all-star? Here you go. You want to be an up upheaval boss? Go ahead. You go that? You want to be a wonderful whirlwinder? Go ahead. You specialize in whirlwind, and it branches out. You get more stuff. But there needs to be more choices. There's literally only one choice for every ability. One. So... You, and you're only taking up to six abilities anyway. So you, you have six choices. And like I said, it's almost always a right choice. So, Blizzard, 
Watch the balance, up the customization, do something about that dungeon spam. Clan members, give us more purpose of being a clan. Let us play together uh, um, for world bosses. I'm excited for the game, though. I'm excited enough, and I'm I'm attached enough to the game that I want to see it through. I want to play it to the end. I'm definitely going to play it on launch, and I'm going to put some good time into it. And I'm going to create some good content, so look forward to that, guys. I appreciate you guys watching this video. Overall, if I had to give a score, I don't really like to do that right now because it's a beta, but if it's... If I was only ranking the beta and only the beta out of 10, I'm thinking about this on the fly. I would say, can I do decimals? You guys, can I do more than halves? I would say like a 7.7, 7.8, right around there. Which at that point, why don't you make it out of 100, right? 77, 78 out of 100, right around there. It's fun. It's enjoyable. I have a great time. I want to play more of it. I'm going to be really, you know, waiting for this release. Can't wait. Um, hopefully you guys enjoyed my streams, if you call it that. You enjoy the videos on this channel. Uh, if you have any questions, concerns, if you didn't get a chance to play, you have any questions about the game because you didn't get a chance to get that answered yourself, let me know. Like I said, I have a guild of awesome people. They have a lot of information. Pick their brains. They'll be on the channel helping you out. I'll help you out as well. Let me know if you have anything you want to want to see any future videos uh, about specific topics. Thank you so much for watching. If you like the content, like, subscribe. Always appreciate that. It keeps me motivated to make more content because I'm telling you, if you guys are not watching... I definitely lose motivation to make videos, so I appreciate the support. Thanks again. Catch you in the next video. Later!